The sustainability of aquaculture, like most farming systems, is commonly managed at the farm scale. In the SuperSeas project, we explore how a shift beyond farms to area-based management can improve the environmental performance of the industry. We found that area-based management not only means scaling up to regions or landscapes, it also means integrating four key governance components. First, farmers need to cooperate at the spatial extent they share systemic environmental risks, such as disease and water quality. Second, assurance tools like eco-certification need to assess the collective management of these shared risks. Third, risk management arrangements like insurance or finance are needed that reinforce the collective management of these risks. And finally, area-level assurance can support supermarkets to increase their supply and ultimately meet consumer demand for their sustainable products. Hi there. This is Balka Kappers from TGS and I would like to share some findings from our aquaponics project in Ethiopia. In aquaponics, fish provide nutrients that are converted by bacteria to be used by the plants on top. Here you see it in small, in Ethiopia we tried this in rural, in urban backyards all over the country. Our main findings I would like to share with you. The first one is for policymakers. If you want to have successful entrepreneurship taking shape in a country, value chains need to be in place that give the site conditions in which entrepreneurs can be successful. In our case these were not in place yet and this provided huge challenges. Secondly, aquaponics can be quite a challenging technique. It's, it's both fish and plant growing. So we said in future uh, adoption strategies we should start with either plants, a simple technology easy to manage or fish and later on create the circularity that we want to achieve. In this way, early adopters can be successful by keeping it simple and later on making it more complex if this allows for a better business. The local park project aims to study growth, productivity and efficiency in Brazilian pig production, especially focusing on pig nutrition and pig genetics. Related to pig nutrition, we have shown that the inclusion of macaúba cake in the diet of crossbred pigs does not impact negatively their performance. Also, the inclusion of macaúba cake is environmental friendly since it reduces the land use. We could also see that when you select purebred animals under one nutrition and the crossbred animals will be used in another nutrition this does not jeopardize the genetic gain, showing us that we do not need to change the breeding goals of the programs. What is really nice for international breeding programs, such the ones that we are working with. Hello everyone. We are Follow the Food. And follow the food researches the effects of inclusive business models on local food security in Kenya, Ethiopia and Ghana. Our main findings are the terms of inclusion matters. In most inclusive business models, companies set the conditions and the only option small producers have is to accept or to opt out. Second, there is no direct positive impact of inclusive business models on livelihoods and then on food security due to intervening variables. To avoid the negative outcomes and the side effects, a comprehensive approach or systems approach is necessary. Hi, my name is Nikki Pau and I manage the uh, Women's Food Entrepreneurship Project in Kenya and Burkina Faso. How to strengthen women's uh, food entrepreneurship through inclusive business was our key question. Since I only have one minute, I'm going to focus on one of the research outputs of this project. This book on mini farming in the city inspired us to collect and document systematically uh, women's knowledge on uh, the business constraints and innovative practices that they use in producing food, in processing food and in marketing food in the city slums of uh, Wakadugu and Kisumu. Uh, the findings illustrate that innovation only works if it is affordable, if it is uh, uh, applicable and if it is accessible. 
and it's really designed by themselves to address the day-to-day -day problems that they face. Furthermore, it was found that uh, these women, they need uh, connections with the capital C. Otherwise, they will uh, not overcome or not opt out of survival entrepreneurship. For example, uh, one of the pre-existing women groups that we worked with started to collect food waste in the local market and turn it into natural manure. We connected them to the local laboratory and to the university to have the manure tested and certified. And this proved a viable business strategy whereby they could align their business interests with social and with sustainability values. Moreover, their initiative gained traction and visibility with the business sector and also with urban policy makers so that their activities and the food flows became visible. And this is just one example of how inclusive business can benefit the bottom of the pyramid. Thank you for your attention. We are a group of Wageningen University, the Netherlands, and Jala University, Sierra Leone, and our business partners are Theo Broma and AMS, working on this GCPI program, helping farmers grow money. Our aim is to better understand community states in international agricultural investments. Communities have complex interactions with investors, for example, over land tenure. Our core message for policy makers, development practitioners, and commercial investors is to invest in knowledge formation. Policies should require diagnostics before, during, and after investments. And companies should invest more in operational diagnostics of community dynamics. In Africa, and actually in many countries around the world, traditional fermented foods exist that are consumed by almost everyone in the society. Many of these traditional foods have not been characterized and processing is just at household level. We characterize the nutritional value and processing practice, so hopefully we can now start to upscale this production and formalize it so that people can have better nutrition, but also earn a living. So a message for policymakers is use the local foods use the local foods to promote nutrition and livelihoods. For practitioners, the same message, lose the local foods, work with the local people so that they can use their foods to connect to urban consumers and their uh, heritage. People love it. And I think this is a great way to actually uh, promote also cultural identity. My name is Miriam Ros, University of Amsterdam, and project leader of the Inclusive Value Chain Collaboration Project, carried out with KIT and partners in Ghana and South Africa. Our project aimed to find out how partnerships between smallholder tree crop farmers and actors within and beyond the chain could be made more inclusive of farmer diversity, gender, farmers' knowledge, and innovation capacity, and the environment. We found first that farmers are not all the same and that they differ in aspirations, opportunities and constraints. Second, we identified a farmer-centered learning platform uh, as a much needed safe space for farmers to share their knowledge and innovations as well as to voice their concerns. Third, we found that the uh, expansion of tree crops is gradually changing the landscape into one big plantation. This threatens the provision of ecosystem services, land available for food crops, as well as uh, tree cover. Our recommendation for policymakers and practitioners is to recognize farmer diversity and to build on our farmer-centered learning platform approach, as these have proven to be very effective ways of peer-to-peer -peer learning and addressing farmers' day-to-day -day challenges. The Liquid Project is about dairy development. It is about improving 
quality and improving inclusiveness in dairy value chains in Kenya, Tanzania, Indonesia and Thailand. One of the topics we studied in Liquid was the role of producer organizations in dairy value chains. Producer organizations provide support and services to farmers and they process the milk for a broad range of consumers. We found that there is a trade-off between quality improvement and inclusiveness. Business, strong business-oriented organizations may not be the inclusive organizations. So policymakers need to make a choice, either promoting inclusiveness, promoting competitiveness or promoting business orientation. The goal of ILIPA was to develop insects as a sustainable protein source for feed, for poultry, pigs and fish. We've done so by developing a rearing system where black soldier fly larvae, like here in my hand, are reared on waste streams. They're added to feed to replace fish meal or soybean meal and to be fed to pigs, poultry or fish. We've shown that this transition provides a much better return on investment. And so there's good evidence now that this is going to make new contributions to the development of smallholder farmers. And so policymakers should make an environment as conducive of these transitions. Farmers should develop this further and they might form cooperatives to supply not only themselves but also feed millers. And in doing so, they contribute to food security, but also to economic uh, improvement and to sustainable use of resources. Hello, my name is Arne Lichtenberg and I'm a member of the Elecams project team. The Elecams project uh, developed and applied uh, serious games and simulation models of uh, the scrim farming system in the Mekong Delta with the aim of raising awareness about the advantages of combining scrim farming with mangrove forest. The serious games uh, were played with uh, about 200 farmers in three provinces and um, the agent-based model was applied during various uh, policy workshops with farmers' representatives and um, policy makers. And playing games uh, made farmers aware of the effects of their decisions and led to more interactions and consultations amongst farmers. And um, the agent-based simulations helped especially policy makers with connecting their ideas with actual um, farming practices of the farmers. So the results of this project showed that uh, combining serious games with agent-based models um, results in a rather effective um, learning platform. In normal conventional aquaculture, we produce feeds that are very good for the animal but also produce a waste that is difficult to degrade. We propose a paradigm shift, producing nutritious pond feed that also produces a good feed, but less strongly as before, but we uh, focus on also feeding the pond with the goal to produce a good waste that is easy to recycle and results in a lot of natural food. When we do that, with our lower quality feed, we get less growth, but we get more growth out of the natural food, so we get a higher production in total. In brief, we produce a cheaper feed, with a higher production and easier management for the farmer, while we produce healthy food and also maintain the production environmental healthy with the concept that can be perfectly integrated in the circular economy and hence contributes to ecological intensification. My name is Robert Lansing. Our project investigates how to improve financial inclusion for cocoa farmers in Ghana with the aim of improving food security. We focus on the relevance of the data information system and on the importance of access to financial products, in particular savings products. By improving financial inclusion of cocoa farmers, food security now 
and in the future will be improved. However, a lot of cocoa farmers still don't have access to credit and there's a lack of poss savings possibilities. Given the importance of financial inclusion for cocoa farmers, policymakers should ensure that financial intermediaries provide uh, financial products to farmers who don't have access to normal commercial banks. Practitioners should actively promote and develop new financial products which are accessible and suitable for farmers in the informal sector.